so we are already familiar with how to evaluate exponents, all right? We just did it in the warm-up, technically. We didn't see the exponents, but what we saw was something like 5 times 5, and we knew that that was going to give us 25, right? Now, what we're going to learn today is a little something called a square root, and it looks something like this. Has anyone ever seen this symbol before in math? Give me a thumbs up if you've seen that symbol before. Okay, have you guys already learned about square roots? No? Maybe you've seen it, but you don't really know how it works. That's totally fine. So this right here is the inverse. Obviously, you don't have to write this down. I'm just showing you. Is the inverse of doing this, squaring a number. This is called a square root, okay? It's the inverse of squaring a number. So let's see. Uh, what that actually looks like. Uh, can I get a volunteer to read this first little sentence here at the top for a rich ticket? Ella, thank you very much. Go for it. Perfect. Thank you very much. So we got a couple of uh, key words in here that I want to highlight real quick. First, of course, being the square root. Again, that is this symbol right here. That is the square root symbol. It looks kind of like a division sign, but with a check mark out in front, right? Uh, and whatever number's inside that square root, we're going to have to break it up into its factors. Now, another way of thinking about breaking a number up into its factors is saying, or uh, I should say, asking yourself the question that I ask all the time, which is, which two numbers multiply to get blank? In this case, blank being 9. Uh, the reason why we're going to break it up into factors is to see if there's any identical factors that we can pull out. In the same way that when we have identical factors in a fraction, if we have 3 times 2 over 3 times 3, here's those identical factors, and we can cancel them out. We're going to do a similar process here with this square root. So, which two numbers multiply to give us 9, everybody? 3 and 3. Go ahead and write those two 3's in there. Most of these notes are filled out already, but there are some blanks, just like we saw in the last unit, so we definitely want to be paying attention. And the reason why I like these printed notes is because we can actively listen, as opposed to frantically copying down what we see uh, and then not absorbing that information. So because most of the information is already in front of us, we can use this time to process, to think, uh, to reread certain things, right? We don't have to waste time writing. So we broke 9 into its two factors, 3 and 3. Because these factors are identical, that's what we're looking for is identical factors, we're going to pull them out of the square root. But when we do this, these identical factors become 1. Here's exactly what we do. We start with the square root of 9. We break it up into its factors of 3 times 3. We loop those factors up, and we bring them right out in front of that square root. Because that was everything that was already underneath our square root, that sign disappears, and we're left with this. Right here's our result of that. Anyone know what that symbol is in front of the 3? Well, it's, it says directly underneath it what it, what it is. It's an addition and a subtraction sign. It's called a plus or minus sign. Okay? It's called a plus or minus sign. So if I asked you what's the square root of 9, your response would be plus or minus 3. But what does that mean? How can it be plus 3 and minus 3? That's a little confusing. Uh, can someone read this little arrowed section right here real quick? Go ahead, Olamipo. Thank you. Starting with we need. We need the sign because 3 times negative 3 equals 9, but negative 3 times negative 3 equals 9 as well. So our answer is both positive 3 and negative 3. Exactly. Thank you, Olamipo. So the reason why we need this interesting looking sign here is because 3 times 3 we all know is equal to 9. Right? However, negative 3 times negative 3 is also equal to positive 9. 
So if we're starting out with our answer of positive 9 and we're taking the square root, we don't know if there's two positive 3's in here or if there's two negative 3's because they both multiply to produce positive 9. It's that same result. Positive 9, positive 9. So that's what this plus or minus symbol means. It's both positive 3 and negative 3. All right? Give me a, a show of thumbs if the, the concept of a plus or minus sign makes a little bit of sense now that we just talked about it. Give me a thumbs up if it does make sense. Thumb sideways if you're still like, uh, I don't really get it. Why is there two symbols there? Okay. All right. I think we're good then. Now, uh, when there's a negative sign in front of your square root, then the whole plus or minus uh, debacle goes away because our entire answer is going to be negative. Again, we start here with the negative square root of 4. We're going to break 4 up into its factors. What two numbers multiply to get 4, everybody? 2, two. two times 2, exactly. Because we have those identical factors, we're going to take them up and bring them out in front, getting rid of our square root sign altogether. But we do still have that negative in front. This minus sign in front means that our answer is not going to be plus or minus 2. It's just going to be negative 2. So the key thing to remember here is when there's not a negative sign in front, we don't know if our answer is positive or negative. So we have to say that it's both. But if there's a negative out in front, of course, our answer is just going to be negative. Hopefully you guys... Uh, can see that. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do some examples here. Let's break up these square roots and uh, do the inverse of squaring a number. So the first one we got square root of 1. Who can tell me what the two numbers that multiply together to produce 1 are? Victor, you got it? Yeah. Yeah, what are the two numbers, Victor? 1 and 1. 1 and 1. Exactly right. 1 and 1. Do we have identical factors there, folks? We sure do. We're going to take those ones, bring them out in front, and they combine to create a single one. Boom. So is that going to be our answer, positive one? Or is it going to be something a little bit different? Azalea, what's our answer here going to be? Uh, minus, plus or minus. Exactly. Plus or minus one is our answer for the square root of 1, plus or minus 1. We could have easily broken this up into the factors of negative 1 times negative 1 and pulled out that negative 1 and that been our answer. So because there's two possibilities for a, a, a correct answer here, we have to include them both. Okay. And this plus or minus sign, although it gets a little bit confusing at first, it's a lot easier than writing out something like uh, that the answer is 1 or negative 1. That's just kind of a more confusing way of writing it. Technically, it's not a wrong way of writing it. Positive 1 or negative 1. But we can just simplify it with that plus or minus sign and say that our answer is plus or minus 1. Um, all right, what about the second one here? What two numbers multiply to give me 16? Can somebody tell me real quick? What two numbers multiply to give me 16? Jordan, go for it. Four and four. Four and four, exactly right. Four times four. Some of you are probably wondering, this seems way too easy. Where's the catch? There is no catch. Uh, as we've seen, the first lesson in these units is typically the simplest lesson, right? We'll kick it up a notch as we move forward. But we take those fours out, and our answer here is going to be plus or minus four. So we started with the square root of 16. We ended with plus or minus four. Let's think about moving this backwards. If we start with positive four or negative four, it doesn't matter and we were to square it, right? If we had positive four and we squared it, what would our answer be? 
16, right? So now what we're doing is just the reverse. We're taking the answer here, 16, and we're doing a square root to it to give us four as an answer. So hopefully you kind of see how we're working backwards here, but it's the exact same thing as squaring a number. In the same way that adding and subtracting are the same exact thing, um, but one of them is with a positive number and one of them is with a negative number, right? So what about this last one here? We've got a negative sign out in front with a 25 inside the square root, right? Who just answered that last one? Was that you, Jordan? Yeah. Okay. Jordan. Uh, so what two numbers multiply to give me 25 here? Kenny? Five times five. Five times five, exactly. Five times five. Now we can't forget negative. there's a negative sign out in front. That's right. So Kenny, what's our final answer here going to be? Negative five. That's exactly right. Is that what you said? No. Okay. Yeah, that's, I, I know what you meant. You meant negative five, right? Because we take these fives out, they become one out in front with that negative sign there. So our answer is just negative five. Not plus or minus five, just negative five when there's a negative sign out in front only. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So that's kind of the basis of performing a square root. By a quick show of thumbs, how do we feel about that? Thumbs up if that makes sense. You feel decently confident about doing that on your own. Uh, thumbs sideways if maybe you need to see a couple more examples. I see mostly thumbs up and a lot of heads down, which is uh, concerning, but it is what it is. Uh, let's take a look at note sheet number two. There's not really anything for us to fill in on note sheet number two. We're just going to take a look and talk about it together. This here is our perfect square chart. Perfect square chart. Perfect squares are an interesting set of numbers. Have we heard of this term perfect square before, anybody? Does this sound familiar? No? No. Good. It's good that it doesn't sound familiar. That means that we're learning something new. Can I get a volunteer for a rich ticket to read out what this uh, perfect square definition is? Chanel, go for it. Starting right here with a perfect square is a number. Perfect. Thank you very much, Chanel. Here is a list of perfect squares with their square roots. Now, this is where things get a little bit confusing, okay? Because we have two separate uh, vocab words here, perfect square and square roots, okay? Now, these two things get confused quite a bit, so let's clarify right away what we're talking about. Perfect square is the number inside of each of these square roots. If you have a highlighter, I would definitely recommend doing this in one singular color. If you don't have a highlighter, that's okay. I'm going to try and get some uh, a class set to put in those um, supply boxes, but I don't have it right now. So perfect squares are all those numbers inside the square root. A perfect square is simply just the product, okay, the product or the result of multiplication between two identical numbers. So one times one gives us one. Two times two gives us four. Three times three gives us nine. Four times four gives us 16. And then we have 25, 36, 49, so on and so on, right? And these are all numbers that we're familiar with because we knew those three warm-up questions uh, like the back of our hand, right? We didn't even have to think about it. We knew that 5 times 5 was 25. We knew 11 times 11 was, right here, 121. And we knew that 12 times 12 was 144. So we're familiar with these numbers already. What we're not familiar with is kind of undoing them or doing the reverse of what we're typically used to doing, right? 
So now instead of multiplying 9 times 9 to get 81, now we're going to take the square root of 81 and get plus or minus 9. This plus or minus 9 here is the square root. So all these plus or minus numbers to the right of the equal sign, those are all our square roots. So hopefully you can see there the difference between a perfect square and a square root based on those two different colors, right? Perfect squares being in orange, square roots being in purple. Now half of this chart we already have memorized, right? Typically in elementary we stop, Rochelle? Go ahead. Typically in elementary school we stop at 12 when we get to our, uh, when we're doing our multiplication tables, right? Did anyone go to school where you, you continued on to like 13 times 13 and 12 or 14 times 14? No, yeah, I, everyone pretty much stops at 12. So 13 through 20, you don't have to memorize them, right? It's helpful to memorize them, but you don't have to memorize them because look, this chart's in our notes. Are we allowed to use our notebooks on tests in here? Uh -huh. Yes, we are. So it's not a problem uh, referring back to this chart throughout this unit, even when we're taking our test, right? So again, the number underneath the square root sign, that's called the square. In this case, these are all perfect squares because they uh, give us a nice even answer. We'll talk about maybe some not so even answers tomorrow, but Today we're going to focus with the perfect squares. And then the plus or minus integer that the square is equal to, integer again just meaning a number, that's the root right there. So again, following along with those color schemes, we got squares and we got roots. The symbol itself is called a square root and that's why it gets a little confusing. But hopefully you see that distinction. Like I mentioned, this process is literally just the reverse of squaring a number. Here's that same exact chart we were just looking at from the other side. 1 squared equals 1, 2 squared equals 4, 3 squared equals 9, 4 squared equals 16, and so on and so on, right? This is kind of what we're more familiar with. Today all we're doing is the inverse, which is the same exact thing, just backwards. I'm a, I don't want to over explain this, but hopefully this is making sense. So just like before, the integer being squared is called the root. So that's like uh, one, two, three, four, like that. Those are the roots. And the number that those roots are equal to is called the square. Let me highlight the rest of these roots here. 5, 9, 10, 6, 7, 11, 8, 12, like that. Yes? Yeah, go ahead. So taking the square root of a perfect square is easy, right? Because we know kind of when we see 49, our brain goes boom, 7 times 7. When we see 100, we go boom, 10 times 10. Our brains are used to that by now. Tomorrow, again, we'll look at some uh, square roots that aren't so nice and perfect, some imperfect squares, but we're not going to worry about that today. Any questions here on note sheet two? Again, there wasn't anything to write in, so hopefully you were, you were with me there doing that. Let's take a look over at number three. We're going to talk about fractions real quick. I know fractions are scary to most of us, but if we understood note sheet one and two, this is going to be like, oh, duh, of course that's what you do. So can I get a volunteer for a rich ticket to real quick read this top thing right up here? I already heard from you two gentlemen. We want to hear from someone new. Andy, go for it, sir. When taking the square root of a fraction, treat the numerator and denominator like two separate square roots and split them up. Thank you very much, sir. 
So exactly what we uh, what we said, or exactly what Andy just said. If we've got this fraction inside a square root, we're just going to split it up into two separate square roots and solve them out that way. So the square root of 1 over 36 then turns into the square root of 1 over the square root of 36. And we can evaluate these square roots individually, right? If we just look at the top, the square root of 1, well, that's just 1 times 1, right? 1 times 1. So our result's going to be plus or minus 1. If we look down to the bottom, 36, well, that's just 6 times 6. So our new denominator is going to be plus or minus 6. Now, we don't need two plus or minus signs in there. We could just bring it out in front to make it neater. And that right there is our answer, 1 over 6. I'm sorry, plus or minus 1 over 6. Because it could be negative 1 6, or it could be positive 1 6. But just like before, if there's a negative in front of the square root, then your entire fraction is negative. So if we have the negative square root of 9 divided by 25, we split that up into the negative square root of 9 over the square root of 25. And uh, someone help me out. What's that going to give us as an answer? It's going to be negative something. What's my numerator going to be, Noah? 3. 3, perfect. How'd you get 3? Because uh, 3 times 3 is 9. That's right. Noah broke 9 into its factors of 3 times 3. He noticed they were identical, and he pulled them out in front. There was nothing else left in that square root, so we just got rid of the symbol, leaving us with 3. Azalea, what's my new denominator? 5. five. How'd you get 5? Because 5 times 5 is 25, right? Hopefully we're starting to see here the patterns of what we're doing. Noah, yeah, go for it. Negative 3 over 5. That's our answer right there. We'll give you guys a minute to uh, digest that. Actually, you know what? Take a look at the bottom two. Numbers 1 and 2 here on the end of number 3. Go ahead and try these on your own. Try number one and two all on your own. See what you can come up with. Work it out to whatever degree makes sense to you. If you can look at it and go, oh, I know what the answer is, just write down the answer. That's fine with me. Uh, minutes and get those tried on your own while I pass these out real quick. No, I, I said I was I would get your spirit or just take it to read when you guys are working on worksheets that you do. I'm going to do them day by day because Tuesday is Rich Ticket Tuesday, right? Yeah. So you guys might need them tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I have seven. All right, who can help me out with number one? Brandon, perfect. What would you get for number one, sir? I was going to ask those last Okay, that's all right. After you help me out with number one, what would you do here for number one, sir? Um, um, divide. Divide? Okay, that's a good thought. You see that fraction bar you think we're going to divide? Uh, let's let's go through this together, Brandon. Let's talk about this. So, what we want to do first, right? If I can get this cord working, Jesus, sorry. Okay. 
There we go. My bad. All right. So here's what we're going to do, Brandon. All right. We got this square root. The whole fraction's underneath that square root. What we want to do is break it up into two individual little square roots just like that. You see what I did there? Perfect. Now that we have it a little bit more understandable, we're going to ask ourselves the question, what two numbers multiply to give me 49? 7 and 7. 7 and 7. Thank you, Mason. So we notice that 7 times 7 gives us 49, right? And what two numbers multiply to give me 64? Brandon, you got that one? 8 and 8. 8 and 8, exactly. Right? So we got a pair of 7s on the top, a pair of 8s on the bottom. We can bring each of those numbers out, leaving us with 7 over 8. Plus or right? Plus or minus. Exactly. Thank you, Azalea. We cannot forget about the plus or minus out in front. So all the numbers that you're going to see on this worksheet, uh, all of the numbers are perfect squares. They are all present on this chart here, highlighted in orange. Okay? So whatever number it is that you're going to be breaking up on your worksheet, uh, it will be on this chart. So please use this chart if you're a little bit iffy on your multiplication facts, right? Does that make a little sense, Brandon, what we did there? Awesome. Go ahead and go, buddy. Don't worry. And uh, who can help me out with number two? Number two, anyone want to help me out with number two? Oh, Meepo, go for it, sir. Negative 15 over 5. Let's, uh, let's go through this here and see if Ole Meepo's right. I have a feeling that he is going to be right. We bring that negative in front. Square root of 225 over the square root of 25. Again, you don't have to write out all this work, okay? If you see the patterns and you, you get it, it's clicking for you, I'm not going to waste your time having you write all this out, right? Uh, what two numbers multiply to give me 225, Olimipo? 15 times 15. 15 times 15, right? Now, that's not one that we really have committed to memory yet. Is there anywhere you can go to find what 225 square root is, Olimipo? Yeah, right over here. Look, boom, there's 225. The square root of 225 is equal to plus or minus 15, <coughs> right? So if your brain sees 225 and goes, uh, I don't know what, what to do with that number, just look back at your chart, okay? There's a reason I gave you this chart. Please use it. And the two numbers that multiply to give us 25 are, of course, 5 times 5. So yes, we are going to have a 15 on top, and yes, we are going to have a 5 on the bottom. That checks out Olomipo, but can we simplify our answer any, or, uh, sorry, can we simplify our answer anymore? No. Yes, we can, right? What's 15 divided by 5? 3. 3. Boom. Our answer here is negative 3. And I'm going to show you guys something interesting here. Right? We found that our answer here was negative 3. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me up to the negative 15 over 5 part. We see that the 15s are the, the roots on the top, the 5s are the roots on the bottom. Good. From that step, now all we have to do is just our simple simplifying a fraction as much as we can. Right? From this point forward, in all of your math classes, you always, always, always need to simplify your answer as much as possible. So you see that these two numbers are both divisible by 5. We definitely can simplify that, and we get negative 3. Now, let's think about this a different way real quick before we start our worksheet. Does anyone know how many times does 25 go into 225? Think about it like this. How many quarters do you need to have $2.25? Count it on your hands if you need to, right? 25, 25, 25, a dollar. 25, 25, 25, $2, $2.25. How many quarters is that in total? Nine. nine, right? So can't we rewrite this as negative square root of nine? Right? What is the square root of nine? Three. Look at that. We got the same exact answer that we did by breaking it up into two separate square roots. So start looking for these patterns, right? If you can find an easier way to do a problem, 
Do it that way, okay? And if you can't find an easier way to do the problem, just do it the way that we learned. It shouldn't be too bad, especially with this table over here. And that's what we got. Any questions on that? I feel like we're feeling pretty good. There's only one way to find out for sure. 